Well, the 13th International Forum on African Perspectives, organized by OECD Development Center and the African Develop Development Bank, took place in Paris, France today. Karina Kamel spoke to Frederica Mazo, the main author of the African Economic Outlook at OECD Development Center, about some of the aims of the conference. Unemployment and skills shortages are the biggest challenges facing Africa's economic progress. The OECD's annual African Economic Outlook has highlighted skills development as a priority, especially since half of Africa's youth is currently illiterate. The report also predicts that growth will increase for oil exporters, but will weaken for countries that import commodities. Private equity is also singled out as a key to the development of Africa's private sector, with funds raised reaching more than $3 billion in 2006. The OECD is organizing a number of events around this report, both here in London and in Paris, to discuss Africa's economic progress. For more, I'm joined by Federica Marzo, main author of the African Economic Outlook report from the OECD Development Center, and she joins us from Paris. Federica, thank you so much for being with us on CNBC Africa. Mm, very welcome. So let's start by this, talking about this report. Why have you singled out skills development this year? Well, actually, the African Economic Outlook, that is this very thick report that I have here with me, uh, is a joint product between the uh, Development Center of the OECD and the Africa Development Bank. Uh, and since this year also, uh, with uh, the participation of the uh, Economic Commission for Africa of the United Nations. Uh, so the, the, the choice of the, of the theme, of the special theme that changes every year, is made jointly with our partners. Uh, and uh, skills development, actually, we believe uh, it is uh, a crucial uh, point, a crucial issue uh, in Africa, since the continent, uh, to different extent, but all the continent, is experiencing this paradox of very high youth unemployment and, at the same time, very severe skills shortages. Uh, so last year, together with our partner, the African Development Bank, we decided to tackle uh, the structural problem uh, that is the development of technical skills. Um, and in the end, uh, in order to, uh, to inform and to, to, to write the country notes, uh, we, uh, we discovered that this theme was very relevant in very different countries, starting from South Africa, for instance, that is very emblematic in the continent, uh, but to, to, to Cape Verde, to different extent, I mean, it's, it's really something that is very relevant. So you're not just talking about degrees here, we're not just talking about formal education, we're also talking about vocational training, an area that you in the report identify as also lacking the right kind of training and also lacking the right kind of funding in Africa. Uh, yes, uh, we think that uh, during the last, uh, let's say, 10, 15 years, uh, skills development in particular, what you were mentioning, the development of uh, the, the training and vocational education, has been uh, somehow mistreated both by governments and uh, by donors. Uh, why? But simply because uh, they put the accent and the, the priority on basic education, primary education. Uh, of course, uh, we uh, don't advocate the, uh, the, the, I would say, the shift of, of funds from basic education to uh, technical and vocational training, but we believe that uh, African government should develop integrated strategies and stop considering primary education in isolation. And many countries are starting thinking this way and are implementing very interesting reforms, uh, including South Africa, but also Ethiopia, for instance, uh, uh, trying to put together primary education, secondary education, trainings, uh, labor market considerations, uh, because of course skills development, if not done in the sectors that have um, uh, good perspectives in terms of employment, uh, cannot be uh, effective. Uh, Federica, let me ask you about your growth prospects for the oil exporters versus the oil importers. Now, we know what oil exporters need to do. They need to diversify their economies. They need to make the most of the, the economic uh, windfall that they're experiencing at this point. But what can oil importers do, given the fact that they're facing the prospect of a bigger budget deficit as the high price of fuel increases and also, obviously, the, the high price of food as well? Yes, you, you are perfectly right. Actually, uh, although the growth prospects for Africa as a continent are 
pretty good because uh, in 2007 the continent grew by 5.7 percent and uh, uh, growth will increase up to almost 6 percent for the medium term. Uh, however, there are uh, big differences between uh, oil importers and oil exporters. Uh, and the gap in terms of growth uh, has widened, widened in 2007 and is expected to widen further in 2008. Um, generally, oil importer countries are facing tougher conditions uh, because of, uh, mainly because of the rise in energy and food prices. And as, as you were mentioning, uh, macroeconomic stability is under threat today. There are many countries that made dramatic efforts during the last years uh, to stabilize the economy. And today uh, they see their uh, public balances deteriorating. Uh, what can they do? Uh, to uh, continue with prudent macroeconomic policies uh, in order to continue to attract these investments that are growing in the continent. And this is a very good news for the continent. Uh, they will have also to tackle more structural uh, things uh, like uh, try to use uh, um, renewable and to invest in renewable sources of energy to, to become less dependent on oil. Uh, and they will have also to tackle the issue of agriculture, where productivity is the lowest in the world uh, now in Africa. And so in order to face the problem of rising food prices and reduce the vulnerability to these external shocks, Africa has to invest more in agriculture to raise productivity uh, and stimulate uh, production and private investment.